After four cuts already this year, the RBI, India's central bank, has left interest rates unchanged. This comes as GDP grew 7.4% in data out on Monday. Looking at this and what it means for the Indian economy, I'm joined by Sheelan Shah from Capital Economics. So Sheelan, last time we talked in September, you forecasted that rates would be kept on hold, as has been the case in data today. While mentioning at the time that RBI will move to the sidelines and put the onus of sustaining the economic recovery in the government and banking sector. Is this still the case and what will this indicate for rates looking ahead? Uh, yeah, I think this is still very much the case. Now, at the time of the September policy announcement, it was made clear in the accompanying statement that the onus would lie with the government um, and also commercial banks to pass on the, uh, the previous cuts, the policy rate um, that we've seen throughout the year. Now, there's been little evidence of this so far, and you know, perhaps because of this, it's almost highlighted the extent to which monetary policy in India has, um, probably has its limits. So, you know, in that regard, it does still seem to be the case that the onus is on uh, the government and, and also the banking sector to drive uh, um, the economic recovery. What has changed probably since the previous meeting, though, which also suggests that rates will now stay on prolonged hold, is the fact that inflation has been accelerating over the past couple of months. You know, the most recent print came in at 5% year-on-year in October, which is a fairly significant rise from 3.7%, uh, which we saw in July and August. So I think, you know, bringing both of these factors together, it does suggest that today's decision to keep rates on hold may well be the, uh, the sort of theme that we see uh, throughout the next year or so. Now, all this comes as India's GDP data came out on Monday, showed an acceleration to 7.4% as manufacturing and services output improved. This contrasts with poor weather conditions hurting the agricultural sector and a sustained decline in India's exports. Could the weakness in these areas offset the better performance of other sectors? It's a difficult one to tell, really. Now, as you say, that the, the, there were some, uh, you know, at, well, at the headline level, I guess, you know, growth still looks very impressive and it picked up further in Q3 according to the official data, you know, 7.4% year on year. Now, the, it probably is the case that, you know, the manufacturing sector has strengthened as such or the in industrial sector more generally, you know, which has been the beneficiary of, for instance, lower commodity prices, which has probably helped to anchor input costs and also cuts the policy rate, which should at least to some extent spur some investment and consumption. However, I would also you know, caution that there are still continued doubts over the accuracy of the newly revised GDP data, and there does seem to be some kind of internal uh, inconsistencies with the data as well. So, you know, it's more likely that growth is perhaps recovering, um, albeit at a fairly gradual and slow pace. In their statement, the RBI says that its accommodative stance continues to be the most important thing in the policy and the bond market should take comfort from it. So is this the case? And what other points in their statement were you focusing on? Given doubts over the GDP data, the RBI more generally has said that it's still concerned about some weakness in the economy. and Therefore, it probably feels compelled to maintain its relatively accommodative stance. Having said that, though, we don't actually think that there's any more rate cuts that are likely to take place, given that it looks like it's going to wait for its previous rate cuts to have more of an effect on the real economy. I guess in this regard, although it is a important part of the statement, um, we should be looking at other factors. Some of them include the mention uh, very specifically of core inflation pressures, which have been rising over the past couple of months. And the RBI stated in its accompanying statement that it should remain uh, vigilant on this trend, which is certainly a more hawkish tone than what it's taken previously. And another important development in, in this statement was the mention of the Pay Commission report, which recommended a, a very sizable increase in public sector pay salaries um, over the next couple of years. Now, that could also lead to the unleashing of inflationary pressures if it were to lead to uh, a more general rise in, uh, in pay settlements and a boost to aggregate demand as well. Uh, now, again, we think that the RBI will probably remain quite vigilant on this, and this suggests that really that rates aren't, uh, aren't likely to fall any further. That was Sheelan Shah with me there, looking at the latest developments in India's economy. Now, there's plenty more market analysis and news right here on Dukaskobi TV, so make sure you keep clicking back. Bye for now.